Good morning, folks. We've got a space weather watch, storm shots from the ground and satellite, magnetic fields in the solar system, super cold atoms, and a suspicious observer from the past. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. Dark coronal holes departing now, still no additional solar wind impacts from them. Left side brightness is a few of the tiniest little solar flares nudging at the X-ray flux the last few hours. Just nudging. But they may become pokes, shoves, and more today and in the coming days as the umbral magnetic fields give away the presence of an active region. We'll be watching it closely today as it enters the Earth-facing half of the Sun. The solid coronal holes are polar bound, while that darkish area south of the equator is mostly just weak coronal regions, not true coronal holes. Let's do some weather here where the two regions of note were the monsoon southwest once again and near the Florida-Georgia eastern border. Cleanup is underway in Colorado as twisters did what they do near Denver and the Eastern Plains. A bit south of there, just one of the lightning shots was worth showing as a step leader danced down a rainburst and when the return strikes from the ground sustained the circuit, they did so long enough for at least six visible bolt intensifications to occur. Also had a tornado near Savannah, less damaging it appears than the Colorado storms. We are shifting next to Himawari, where this system is at the Japan coastline now. It is set to pound westward along the southern half of the country today. Let's come to the latest updates on the magnetic fields of the planets. Earth's massive field is much more like a gas giant than a rocky world. Jupiter and Saturn both have relatively similar fields blown back by solar wind and maintaining a north-south orientation relative to the Sun. However, this is not the case with Uranus and Neptune. Both appear to have their fields tumble relative to the north-south orientation of the solar system, and it's actually not due to planetary tilt, but due to the dipole fields of the outer gas planets being strongly misaligned with the actual poles of the planets. Glad I don't have to forecast space weather there. Up next, the ISS cold crew just made the coldest thing in the known universe. Bose-Einstein condensates, far colder than outer space, and they are going for colder. The fun thing about these condensates is that they break down structurally just like plasma, and you cannot tell atoms apart, but rather see a wave-like cloud of the atoms chilled so deeply. A different kind of cold plasma if you want to think of it that way. On today's podcast over at SuspiciousObservers.org, we've got explanations of that redshift story from yesterday, top news recap, and a story about one of the greatest solar scientists in the history books believing a conspiracy was afoot to hide the grand solar minimum, and who may have been the first solar-focused suspicious observer. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.